There's no best tech stack for all applications, but there is a best tech stack for your individual set of requirements. If you follow the guidelines in this video, then I will help you pick it. This is one of the most commonly asked questions by engineers when they're about to start a new project. How do I choose my tech stack? Everyone from people leading a team of engineers at a startup to people that just had an idea for a side project and you want to bring that to life. You're going to need to start by picking a tech stack. But there's a lot of misconceptions about tech stacks. The internet is full of developers that are arguing for the tech stack that they use, pretty much only because it's the one that they use. So in this video, I'm gonna try and lay out all of the factors that you need to consider when you're picking your tech stack. And I'm specifically not gonna make any recommendations for any frameworks or programming languages because there is no best set of technologies for every project. The best choice always depends entirely on the factors that we're going to talk about in this video. So I'm gonna say that one more time. There is no best tech stack overall, but there is a best tech stack for your specific project. Before we start though, let me just quickly explain what a tech stack actually is. If you've been onto my website, trainsco.com, and you've seen some of my example tutorials and courses on here, then you'll notice this little graphic next to each course on the right hand side. This shows the tech stack, and this is split into columns where each column has a bunch of logos in it. So in this case, there's a front end and there's a back end, and this whole thing is your tech stack. So it's all the programming languages, the libraries and the frameworks, and the third party services and the infrastructure choices. Now this image doesn't show absolutely everything that you need to build a project. Some stuff isn't included. So things like your IDE or your operating system or your version control, those things are generally not considered part of your tech stack. So like Trello or Jira, for example, that's not your tech stack. But TypeScript absolutely is because it's a programming language. React is because it's a framework that you're using. And AWS Lambda is because it's the execution environment for part of your code base. Now there are some famous tech stacks that are often described using acronyms. For example, there's MERN, which stands for MongoDB, ExpressJS, React, and Node.js. There's also LAMP, which is Linux, Apache, MySQL, and either PHP, Perl, or Python. But these are just a couple of the more well-known ones with catchy acronyms. A tech stack really could be any collection of technologies and can be much bigger than just four things. On my website, trainsco.com, I use this tech stack of React, TypeScript, Next.js, AWS Lambda, and S3. Each part of that tech stack is like a jigsaw piece that does a different thing. So Next.js is used as a static site generator to generate the blog posts as HTML and JavaScript. That's then saved to S3, which is a cloud storage bucket on AWS. Then my interactive tutorials and things, they're written in TypeScript and React. Now to make some of the site work, I also have a few other libraries and services that I use. So I use the open source Monaco editor to make this interactive coding panel work. That's a library that I'm using on the site, but I don't really consider that part of the tech stack. Likewise, I use AWS code pipeline to release changes and I use GitHub to store the source code. But again, I don't really consider those two to be part of the tech stack, but you could though, if you wanted to. There's no strict rules on this, so it's kind of up to you. You could say that Monaco is part of your tech stack. But anyway, let's jump out again and talk about the process of choosing a tech stack for your project. Choosing your tech stack is a process of looking at all of your project requirements and working out which features you need, picking a set of technologies that will allow you to build the best solution. And then when you make that decision, there's a bunch of factors that you really need to consider. The first one is your learning curve. A learning curve is a graphical representation of how your performance in a certain skill improves over time with experience or learning. It shows the relationship between learning effort, such as time spent learning or number of practice attempts, for example, and learning performance on the y-axis, so how proficient you're getting. Different technologies have different learning curves. So you might have a short learning curve that looks like this, or you might have a longer learning curve that looks like this. Now it's important to point out that you don't actually have to reach the top of the graph to be able to build something with a technology. So if the learning curve were JavaScript, for example, then down the bottom left, you might have JavaScript functions and loops and variables. And then at the top of this, you might have really advanced stuff like the intersection observer API or iterators and generators. So stuff that's part of JavaScript development, but you don't actually need to learn all that to be productive. You don't need to be an absolute master in JavaScript basically to build a website. So you need to assess where on this learning curve you actually need to end up to be productive. Now, when it comes to judging what the learning curve is gonna look like for a new technology in your stack, then you need to consider a few different things. You need to consider how good is the documentation basically, right? The better documentation that there is, the quicker you'll be able to learn with it. 
Maybe you could have a read through the first couple of articles and documentation and get a feel for how easily you understand that documentation, because that will determine your learning curve in the long term. Also, consider how similar that technology is to things that you already know. The learning curve for TypeScript, for example, is significantly shorter if you already have both JavaScript and strong type language experience like Java. If you only know JavaScript, then the learning curve for TypeScript is going to be slightly longer. If you don't know any programming at all, then the learning curve for TypeScript is going to be even longer still. So think about how similar a technology is to something that you already know. Estimating your learning curve is really important because the quicker you, go, you or your team can get up to speed in a new technology, the quicker you can start actually building the thing that you're going to be building. So this is why some very common advice for technical founders at startups is just to pick whatever tech stack you're most familiar with. If you pick a language that you already know extremely well, then the learning curve doesn't even exist. It's just a straight line upwards. You already know it. So this by itself can make that technology a good choice for your stack. You need to weigh up the learning curve against some of the other factors on this list. And the next factor to consider is community support and ecosystem. An active community around a technology can significantly impact your project's success. This includes the availability of libraries, frameworks, tools, and plugins that can extend the functionality of your core technology choices. So for example, on my website, like I looked at the availability of the Monaco editor on my choice of React and TypeScript. Additionally, a vibrant community means better support options like more documentation, better forums, more tutorials. These resources can really accelerate development and they can offer solutions to common problems. They can also give you inspiration for innovative features and ways to use that technology. Prioritizing technologies with a strong ecosystem can really speed up the development of your project and it can ensure that you've got all the necessary support throughout the life cycle of your application. Another key factor to consider is the compatibility and the interoperability of the technologies that you choose. It's essential to select technologies that work well together to avoid any potential roadblocks in your project's development. For example, if you're considering a front-end framework that relies heavily on WebSockets, then you need to ensure that your back-end technology also supports WebSockets. This compatibility extends to databases, to third-party services, and to any other integrations that your project might require. Ensuring that your tech stack components are compatible can prevent you making costly and time-consuming mistakes further down the line. Okay, the next one is really important. Performance and cost at your target scale. The expected scale of your application is a critical role in selecting the tech stack that you choose. You need to decide the scale that you're expecting your application to work at and then estimate the cost and performance of running the tech stack at that scale. Technologies that are ideal for high traffic applications might be overkill for small projects. For example, the best tech stack for a platform that serves a million users per day will be very different and be priced very differently to a platform that only serves 100 users per day. Don't over or under engineer your application. And I'm talking specifically to startup founders or entrepreneurs with this advice. We all have a dream that our application will one day be used by billions of people around the world. But if you're building an MVP, it's extremely unlikely that that MVP will still be in production when you hit anything like that scale. You don't need to build an MVP that scales up 100x every year. You need to build an MVP that validates your assumptions about your target market, and you don't need to scale to a billion users to be able to do that. So get that out of your head that scalability is the most important thing. Because at the end of the day, scale nearly always comes with a cost attached. And if you don't need Google scale, then you probably don't have Google money to pay for it either. So pick a solution that targets the scale that you expect at the minute. Rewriting code is not as expensive as people make it out to be, especially in the early days of a startup. And speaking of growing a startup, there's another thing to consider, which is team expertise. So the availability and the expertise of your development team are crucial factors in selecting a tech stack. If you're planning to build a team, then consider the availability of skilled developers in those technologies that you're considering. Some technologies might have a smaller talent pool, which can lead to higher hiring costs or a longer recruitment process. Whereas on the other hand, choosing widely used technologies might make it easier to find experienced developers. So aligning your tech stack with the skills of your current or your prospective team can really accelerate and reduce the need for extensive training. And this kind of goes hand in hand with the learning curve as well. So a lot of available engineers and or a short learning curve is important. Lastly, consider how future-proof the technologies are in your tech stack. The tech industry evolves really rapidly, and today's leading technologies might not be um, around in the future, they might be obsolete, or they might have just fallen out of fashion. So it's important to consider how easy it will be to update or migrate parts of your tech stack as new requirements emerge or as new technology evolves. 
Selecting technologies with a strong track record of updates and a commitment to backwards compatibility, and also things that have a clear roadmap, can help safeguard your project against being outdated. That kind of foresight can help can save considerable time and resources in the long term, and it just ensures your project remains competitive in the longer term. Choosing the right tech stack for your project involves a comprehensive assessment of various factors. There's the ecosystem, the learning curve, the performance and cost considerations at your expected scale, and then also future-proofing capabilities and the availability of a team. Carefully evaluating all of these aspects can choose a tech stack that not only meets your current needs, but also supports your project's growth and helps evolution over time. By carefully evaluating all of these aspects, you can choose a tech stack that not only meets your current needs, but also supports your project's growth and evolution over time. Sometimes the best technology is the one that is the easiest to replace in six months time. We've all been there. So I hope you found at least some of this video useful. If you did, then why not pop a comment in the comment section below? And don't forget to check out the other videos on my channel. My name is James Charlesworth, and I'll see you in the next Train to Code video here on YouTube.